how many one by one stitches are there? In short, there are two, the square and the circle. Well, that's not 100% true because there are actually four, two different mirror images of circles and two mirror images of squares. How many 2x1 stitches are there? How about 3x1 or 2x2? These types of questions are a natural direction for further investigation. In today's video, we will try to find all the 2x1s. Larger sizes will be discussed in future videos because they are much harder, and in order to understand them, we must study 2x1 stitches first. Before we start, I must address that even 2x1s are a complicated subject to tackle in only a few minutes. The best way, of course, to understand these stitches is, of course, to make them. Tutorials will be provided next time I'll be talking about stitches and adding annotations for them here when they'll be available. As a prerequisite, I recommend these videos were introduced what I call stitch notations. They are the diagrams that I'll be using to represent the stitches. Video number one talks about one by one starting positions, and number two talks about one by one stitches. You can skip, of course, the sections where I show how to draw them, it's not really important. Video number three is a good exercise about series of one by one stitches, and number four talks about larger starting positions and some examples. This one I recommend to watch for future videos as well. If you understand this topic and you want to make your own video on it, I'm providing all pictures that I use for this video and a few others. The link is in the description. If you do, please let me know and I'll add an annotation right here so that anyone who has a hard time can go there. And for those who prefer to read the script of this video, the link for that is in the description as well. Among the most well known to be one stitches are the brick and the twist. A brick stitch is very similar to a square because in order to complete the whole turn, you need to make what I'll call two-handed bricks, the right hand and the left hand, which are mirror images of one another. The twist is very similar to a circle stitch, in that only one-handed orientation is involved. Either make a right hand or you make a left hand stitch. This means that we can make a twist stitch rotate clockwise, or if we choose the opposite handedness, it will rotate in the counterclockwise direction. That's pretty great and all, but you may be wondering, are there more 2b1 stitches, or are we limited to only the bricks and the twists? So, spoiler alert, the answer is that there are more. There are six for each handed orientation. Six for the left hand and six for the right. Now, before I present you the other stitches, I need to explain what I define as a 2b1 stitch. Why its size is called 2b1 and what the definition of a 2b1 stitch is. Let's first talk about the size. First of all, it doesn't matter if you call it a 1b2 or a 2b1. But why do I label its size as a 2b1, not for example 4x2, based on number of squares in both dimensions? This is a more philosophical question, but I'll give one quick answer. One reason is because in the beginning, in order to start a 2b1 stitch, in terms of raw string count, you need three strings, two strings in one direction and one string in the second direction. There are other more complicated explanations why it's better to call it a 2b1, but we'll discuss them some other day. Moving on to the definition of a 2b1 stitch. Again, incomplete definition of a stitch is a huge topic that we won't have time to cover today, so I'll describe it here only briefly, since the main purpose of our video is exploring how many 2b1 stitches there are. So a stitch is a transition from one position to another position. There are four options, two for each of the two positions that you can start with. A left hand position can then be followed by a stitch that transitions to either a left or a right position. And a right hand position can then be followed by a stitch that switches to either a left or a right position. In this definition, a stitch is only one single step. In other words, I do not count a series of stitches as being a stitch. For example, a brick stitch keychain is not a stitch, rather it's a series of alternations of right and left handed brick stitches. Speaking of series, any keychain or even any other ordinary lanyard is a series of stitches. However, as shown earlier, a stitch is preceded and followed by a starting position. The brick and the twist keychains consist of a series of repeated stitches of one of the four types. Again, these figures represent only the bricks and the twists. I'm making them plural because, as shown in these diagrams, 
we always end up with two possibilities for each stitch, and they are mirror images of one another. By this definition of stitches, there exists six stitches for every hand orientation. The brick, twist, thrill, chevron, inverse chevron, and octagonal. And these are the notations. Notice that it is very easy to find out the other handedness once you know a first one, because again, it's a mirror image of a first. Generally speaking, there are two options. Either the stitch's position shifts to the opposite orientation, right hand to left hand and vice versa, such as a brick, a chevron, and inverse chevron, or, like the twist, throw, and the octagonal stitches, they maintain the same position throughout the lanyard, right hand to right hand, and left hand to left hand. Coming back to the topic of stitch series, how can we name them? In other words, how many to be one lanyards can we create a name based on what we learned so far? Every position we start with has six possible stitches that we can continue with. Because of that, there are an infinite number of sequence of stitches. Now, because of that, it's a little bit hard to name every sequence because there are infinite number of sequences. But some sequences can be named logically with a description of the stitches. For example, when people say brick lanyard, they mean the alternation between the two brick stitches. And when we say twist lanyard, they mean a sequence of either right-handed twists or left-handed twists. If we follow this argument, we can include four more lanyards. Keep in mind that a lanyard is just a sequence of stitches, the chevron, inverse chevron, swirl, and octagonal. The chevron and inverse chevron lanyards are similar to the brick lanyard, because they are all need to go for the left and right of a stitch. The swirl and the octagonal lanyards are similar to the twist lanyard, in that the sequence is only one single stitch, either a right hand or a left hand. This means that we get two lanyards for each of them, a left-handed and a right-handed swirl, and a left-handed and right-handed octagonal. Now for some lanyards. These are all six lanyards that we mentioned, which start from this particular left-hand position. Brick, twist, swirl, chevron, inverse chevron, and the octagonal. My next videos about stitches will be tutorials for all the six to be one stitches, but if you can't wait, I recommend the website scoobydoos.eu, where I talk most of the stitches' names. For those who can't read French, we have nice diagrams that show how the stitches are done. Finally, this isn't a tutorial video, but I'll leave you all with a to be one keychain that you can try to figure it out. On the upper left side of the screen, you can see the stitch to start with. To make a stitch like that, you'll need six different strings, and make a film a double-sided 2v1. You can watch a video about a double-sided 2v1 here. All you need to do is to choose some similar colors instead of six different colors. The pattern of a stitch's alternation, or in other words, how to continue from starting the stitch, is on the upper right side. And yep, that'll be it for this video. See ya!